Now for more insights into the global race for a COVID-19 vaccine, I'm joined live via Skype by Dr. Peter Chin Hong. He's a professor of medicine and an infectious disease specialist at the University of California, San Francisco. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me on. So we see that Moderna says its vaccine is getting good results in older patients. How important is that? Well, it's important for two reasons. First, traditionally, older patients don't have such a robust immune response to vaccines. And secondly, the older patient population is where the money's at. That's where most of the morbidity or the deaths from COVID-19 occur. And do we know anything about the trial outcomes for other demographics that are also disproportionately affected? Well, that's the problem with the Moderna vaccine. I think it's been criticized for not having enough underrepresented minorities, although they are about 18 to 20 percent. And now we saw that the FDA had to claw back some of what it said about plasma over the weekend and put, and put treatments about its efficacy in doubt. How does that hurt the world's trust in a potential COVID vaccine? It doesn't really hurt it at all. I mean, the FDA is um, uh, calling for an emergency use authorization of plasma and the criticism is really about the lack of randomized control trials, not really about the efficacy or the trust in antibody protection. Now, we have seen other countries, China and Russia, already starting to go ahead with vaccinating some of its high-risk residents without phase three trials. What are your thoughts on this? I'm really disappointed in that. Um, I, I think it's really uh, irresponsible, mainly because a lot of the narrative from the anti-vaxxers in particular have to do with, you know, worry about adverse effects. And we really need to see not only efficacy, but safety in the larger population, which is phase three trials. So then are you concerned that other countries might follow suit and try and push out a vaccine before going through all the phase three trials? Well, or meet that halfway. So there are rumors that some countries may, for example, act on partial data to approve a vaccine, mainly for political gains and capital. And so where does the rest of the world stand when it comes to therapeutics for COVID? So right now we're, stand, we're looking at treating the virus and treating the inflammation in the sickest patients. I think the most ubiquitous drug that has the best evidence so far that's available all around the world is dexamethasone. But that mainly only attacks the inflammation part or tames the inflammation. I think for the virus perspective, there's still a lot of work in needing to democratize access of these drugs for uh, patients around the world, like uh, remdesivir and, you know, maybe interferon beta. I think that's being studied now. I think convalescent plasma and monoclonal antibodies can also be more widely available around the world. We just need more studies. And what are some of the questions you think people should really be asking at this point with all these different trials people are trying to follow? Well, I think the big million dollar question really is you have a vaccine who's going to take it? There's some surveys in the United States saying that only about 50% of the people are ready to take a vaccine right now. I think particularly in underrepresented minorities, minority populations, we have to work on building that trust between, uh, you know, investigational vaccine or vaccine once it's approved and actually getting it. If and when a vaccine is successfully developed, what sort of communication plans will be needed from government to really make sure that residents not just get educated about the vaccine, but receive it as well? Well, I think we have a long road to take, but, and I think that people should start working now. We need to really get into these communities with people who speak, who are culturally competent, who speak the right language, who can get in the communities and build trust right now, not when the vaccine is approved. I think we have to start right now. And something that we've also seen is people being concerned about whether these vaccines, once they do get approved, will become mandatory. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think if it's efficacious and, um, you know, it, it's, it's safe, which I, I assume it would be by the time it's approved, it's not a bad idea because it becomes a public health issue rather than an individual issue. So for people at home who are wondering what they should be making of all these different studies that are coming out, what message would you like to leave them with? Well, I think there are many questions and, you know, personally, I would be the first to stand in line to get a vaccine. Uh, there are some questions about, suppose you took one vaccine and the next one that comes up off the assembly line is better. You know, what would you do in that situation? I think, you know, we have many questions to answer and ask, but I would ask the public to really trust in the process. You know, once it's gone through the regulatory uh, proceedings, 
to really believe that it's safe because we all need to get it if we were to achieve herd immunity, which is 70% and more. All right. Well, thank you for your insights. Dr. Peter Ching Hong there, professor of medicine and an infectious disease specialist at the University of California, San Francisco.